right? Yeah. And that was four years ago when I first, and, but that's when I fell in love with running, right? I just found, I went running one night and I found this like meditative state that I'd never been in before. Yeah. And I got done and I was like, that was amazing, you know? This is dope, man. I feel like I'm in a post-game conference. Did, did you see, did you watch the Heath and Celtics last night? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, I was watching it. Crazy. I was like, let's check in on the score yeah. real quick. Yeah. And I was like, okay, actually, let's keep the game on. Yeah. Let's, let's it's yeah. intense. Like, that last... I actually, like, I looked up the score on... Because I was working on it. Did you computer. watch it till the buzzer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only actually watched like last two minutes, which yeah. is the most. I, watched, I think I turned it on in like mid midway through the third quarter. Golly, game seven is gonna be crazy. I know that's wild. All right, man. Um, hey guys, welcome to Paving the Trail, episode number nineteen. Uh, today we have on the show Bradley Parker. Say what's up, hey man. Guys. Um, sorry, Heath. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure you're out of town, so. Um, we miss you. You're here in spirit. Yeah, yeah, you're always in my heart. <laughs> always in my heart forever. For real. So, um, dude, yeah, yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Dude, no problem. Uh, I've been wanting you on since episode like nine, ten. Uh, I was like, I wanted someone kind of like, like healthy. Like, that's what yeah, I told. That's, that's, that's how. Man, that's how I yeah, wanted to. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you think you could hit him up? And he, I think he said he would try yeah and wait we weren't sure if man i'm hard down. i'm all, i'm i'm glad i'm here man this is yeah. fun this is yeah, fun dude. i'm always it's i'm like always never getting back to people and stuff you know that's yeah. just how that's just like i'm one of those guys yeah, but me too. you know but, when um, this happen. but like that's how i am with all my homies and stuff too you know like i won't talk to them mm-hmm. for you know a couple weeks and then but when you see them it's all love yeah you know yeah, they understand. So, like every, yeah so yeah. that's how i kind of live my life man and that's what's up. And I don't think you asked me. I just want to make that clear. I'm not ignoring you, Heath. Okay. I don't think you shouted. Oh, he out never to did. Me. No. Oh, maybe he was like, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's Heath's like growing in the video space too, man. And he's like, really bro, we need like to get the drone out. Find. Yeah, we need to get the drone out. That's dope. Yeah, yeah dude. He's uh, he's really like starting to figure out his own style, and um, yeah, lately it's been hard to like link up with him. But I understand too. Like you said, like. I understand that he's he's doing his own thing. Life gets busy, man. Mm-hmm. It but is what it is. No we'll hard feelings. Up, yeah, we'll link up during podcasts. We'll link up during collaborations. Yeah. And then um, hopefully he's just still part of Snail Trail Studios because I really, th- like my worst fears. He, Don't leave. Heath. He learns everything and then yeah. he's just like, all right, he's like I'm this, off on yeah. my own. Yeah. He's like six man of the year goes, uh, <laughs> goes James Harden-esque. Yeah. Are you also a Mavs fan? Dude, I like, I like the Mavs. I'm a Phoenix fan. He doesn't like that very much. I like the game, man. I, that's what I was saying last night. I was just like a competitive game, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So like you're probably a huge Jimmy Butler fan then? Bro, Jimmy, yeah. He's yeah. good vibes, yeah. you know? I'm, I'm starting to like do a little bit more research about him. Dude, his his story is crazy. I think yeah. he was... Uh, I don't... I, I think he was like Juco. This. I yeah. think he went Juco and then, yeah. Well, he was like homeless for, for a little yeah, bit, heard, right? Or yeah. is that... You think that's made up? I heard or? about that, no. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like just a story of like coming up and like... Yeah being the competitive nature yeah that that's it in. and you can see it in them bro mm-hmm. you know like mamba mentality yeah, yeah almost a little <laughs> bit in there. Yeah. yeah yeah so um i kind of want to dive into you and like the, your your history as far as like um like the physical fitness goes yeah. and of course a, lo- a lot of that is mental too but yeah. when did you start kind of taking your physical fitness you know seriously so i mean i played basketball my whole life was always a subpar <laughs> Basket, you know i was like just a, i was good enough to be able to play on any team uh-huh. and i didn't really have to practice you know and i was good enough to just kind of like be on the team but i was yeah. never like a star athlete um you know as sad as that was in my mind i was in my yeah. mind i was but you know at the end of the day like from a bird's eye view like there was other people way better than me looking yeah. back on it you know but so high school ended and I didn't I wanted to play college basketball. I didn't have any college offers and uh I walked on to a small school called Dallas Christian and we're just going to go. I'm just this is like where 
I don't know. This I feel like this is where like my life started mm -hmm. right here. You mm -hmm. know, like my conscious awareness. Like it it waited until I was like eighteen, and then it was like, hey, you know, what's up? Like you're a <laughs> conscious human being, and you know, you have to make decisions and you know that affect the rest of your life. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, damn man, I really want to play college basketball. So I worked my ass off. I was in the gym two times a day, every day, and. I came across this guy, this this old man named Amos. He was the coolest dude I've ever met, man. And he was always in the gym getting some shots up. Dang. And just full of energy, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And, man, me and him just started, you know, chatting it up every now and then. And turns out that his brother or cousin or even if they were, I don't even know if they're related, but he was like his, you know, my brother or my cousin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um coached a college of basketball team he oh, coached shit. at dallas christian and so he got me in touch with him called him he was like come out to uh prestonwood baptist church on yeah. a, it was like a sunday morning i think saturday morning or sunday morning and i hopped in some like some open runs and he offered me a spot on the team you know and i was like all right dope so went there for a year played basketball so, i mean again this was like this was like D3 right. equivalent, but there were some good athletes. We played against some good teams, um, and it was like playing at another level, you know? Yeah. Um, so I went there. We won our national championship thing, and we won our national championship. I don't want to downplay it. It That's was cool, a, it, right? Yeah, yeah, like it was an awesome experience. Um, I'm still friends with some of those guys today, and. Anyways, after that, my basketball career was over. Um, I'd been in the gym since, like, those last two years, like, at a, or last year and a half, really, like, mm -hmm. out of high school, like, training to try and play college ball. Mm -hmm. um, just really hitting the weights, right? I graduated high school, one like, the same height I am right now, like, 160, right? Dang. Like, 30... 35 well about 30 pounds lighter than i am right now yeah right and so i was just trying to like at that time i was super into like youtube fitness and stuff and yeah. i just wanted to be like a bodybuilder <laughs> right yeah, yeah, like right, right right and so i was just working out all the time still playing basketball but anyways fast forward college is over so now i'm just really like i'm still working out every day lifting weights right right and um kind of got real into fitness then so that was probably 2013 is when I really started like taking it serious. Mm -hmm. um, but that was just just lifting weights, and that was that like took over my entire personality, mm -hmm. and like that was who I was, right? right? And so everyone knew you as the guy that I not not even everybody knew me that, but that's what I knew myself as. Oh, okay, okay, you yeah. know. And yeah. so like every single day, that's the only thing I cared about was going to lift weights, <laughs> and then after that, like whatever right you know like yeah. whatever happens happens and uh so I didn't really you know like that was the main focal point of my life was yeah. like getting in the gym which is a great and, thing to focus on. which is a great thing but i kind of let that be like my like my persona for the mm -hmm. next five years and you know like i was caught in the restaurant industry mm -hmm. right started waiting tables and man i did that for eight to ten years i i don't really know exactly I, I guess i started in 2014 is when i started uh working in the restaurant and yeah. i stopped in 2022 so eight years dang dude right that that let's pivot on that for a second how, how did you jumped like I mean, yeah. I'm sure, like, what was going through your head? Did you... What, you mean, like, moving careers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like just pivoting to a completely different... What do you do now? It, so, I sell cars now. And, just, yeah. you know, I'm up at 5.30 every morning, 5.30 or 6, depending, you know. Mm -hmm. Used to, I'd be, you know, I'd go to bed at 4 a.m. and wake up at 11, 30, 12 yeah. every day, right? So, it's just a completely different lifestyle for the better, I might say. Okay, yeah. seeing the sun in the sky, <laughs> seriously, like seeing the sun in the sky every yeah. day is a life hack. Yeah. That is like for your hormonal health Yeah, and your your mental well-being, seeing the sun in the sky is crucial to your 
to your health. 100%. Yeah. What, what, uh, it releases a certain. I mean, that's natural vitamin D, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's a hormone. Yeah. That changes the way your body functions if you don't get enough of that. Yeah. That's why winter, like the winter, when people say like, you know, like winter uh, depression or like, like the winter blues. Right. Or people in Seattle that right. are always sad because it's always raining. Isn't, isn't that the suicide capital of the world is Seattle? Probably. Or of the United States? That sounds I feel like I've heard right. that statistic. Yeah, that sounds about right. If not, sorry, yeah. Seattle. And the fact that it's always raining there but probably has a lot to do sunny, with it. it's never man. Yeah. You know, you need sun. Anyways. But yeah, that was a huge adjustment. Right. And so that happened. Man, I get, we can dive into this. I quit. I walked out of my job. Was it like a certain event that made you, or I mean, if you don't. No, want to I'll, into I'll dive yeah. into it. I, yeah. Like I walked out of my job on a Saturday night. We were bartending, like I was bartending. Yeah. And it was just like the universe was whispering at me, you know, mm-hmm. and I was just like, I don't want to do this. Oh my God. I was like, I don't want to do this. I had no that's plan. Like, you that's know? like, I, I want a story like that one. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, like there's so much to kind of like fill in the spaces too because I feel mm-hmm. like I missed a lot, but that's okay. Um, there's so much more to it, you know? Like I knew for the last eight years, I obviously didn't want to work in a restaurant. Yeah. Right. Right. And I it's mean, not you like you have enjoyed it at, at no. I'm not saying there stuff, was. Right? It was great times. I met great people. Yeah. Okay. The last place I bartended, shout out Moxie's. It was dope. Is that a? You know, it's in South Lake. It's this oh, nice. Oh, okay. This, That's all you This say. nice bar on the corner of South Lake, mm-hmm. and I met some cool ass people there. Like people that came in, um, people I worked with. That's where I met my wife. Shout out. Okay. Yeah. Is she still there? Yeah. No, yeah, she's still, oh, she's still there. there. Yeah, she's got uh, like a week left, and then she's working like up to her due date. Wow. Dude. Yeah, she won't stop. She's <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's a warrior. That's tough. Yeah, yeah and I had to quit like two weeks before. I mean, I've been trying to make her quit. You know, she's I'm like, you need to stop, and she's like, I just want to keep doing it. So shout yeah. out you. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I had great times like at these places I worked, man. But at the same time, I knew I was like, I don't want to do this forever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, we got together. Now, she has a we have a kid. Is her kid from a um, previous relationship? Mm-hmm. But he's like he's my son, right? Yeah, man. And so quickly, I catapulted into fatherhood. Just you boom! Just all of a sudden, it. man. Yeah. Right, and it changed my life. You know, I I love it. Right. Yeah. Um, and now I have my first, like my first blood child, newborn baby about to be born, you know, like I feel it in her stomach, just moving around and stuff. And I just can't even, fa- I don't, yeah. I can't even understand it yet. You You're know, like freaking out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. are you, something's about to come out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so all that combined, obviously when I quit my job, she wasn't pregnant. Right. But like I said, I was kind of like thrown into fatherhood and I was like, man, I hate coming to work at 4 p.m. when they're just chilling at home. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I was like, I hate that. I hate not being able to spend time with them. Yeah. And amongst other things, yeah, one night I was just like, dude, I just don't want to do this anymore. And you know, sorry to everybody I was working with that night, but I kind of just dipped out the back door. <laughs> and <laughs> them since. You, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, like, I'm cool, cool with everybody, yeah. but I just dipped out the back door, man. I had no plan, no idea what I was going to do. I was like, I'll go bartend somewhere else. I don't know. I was like, I don't want to do this. Universal open up something for me. Yeah. And that was in September or October of last year. Right. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, from that point from October to February of this year was like the hardest time of my life. Just, I had no plan. I kind of shot myself in the foot walking out of that job Mm -hmm. and like financially just struggled the hardest I ever had my whole life. And I started bartending at this other place in South Lake, but just wasn't making any money. Right. 
And then I was like, damn, dude, I just, like, I got to do something. And some dudes I used to work with at Moxie's just reached out to me one day, you know, and were like, hey, come sell cars with us. And I was like, okay. And I did it. And I was like, damn, I wish I would have done this a long time ago, you know, because they tried to recruit me, like, two, three months before that. And I was like, nah, I'm good, man. You know, I don't want an easy job. I don't want to be a car. I don't want to be a sleazy car salesman. Yeah. Yeah. Do get that was the persona I had. I was like, I don't want to be the guy with the bad rep. You know, I was like, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the nice guy. And uh, so that's been fun in its own going into that world and kind of like creating my own system. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they always tell us, they're like, hey, you work here, but like you're your own little business selling cars you're your own little business it's up to you to you know follow up with people and try to get them back in the door and schedule appointments and stuff yeah and so that's been fun that's been super addicting and i think it being in the sales world like really ties into like personal growth and stuff yeah and so i think just within the past four months it's almost been like my work and my play and everything has kind of just like intertwined and so i feel like like i'm in a happy place that's good um you know in 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 my job right and uh i feel like that's just one less you know not that you're not going to put effort towards that but it's one less thing you have to stress about yeah or worry about yeah you know or that you feel like you don't like when you're there you're like you you're being able i don't want to be somewhere else when i'm there yeah you know yeah like it's I a under, huge thing yeah. that people underestimate, I think. Being present. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I mean, you hear that time and time again. That's that's the key to life, right? It's just be present. Yeah. You know? Because you worry yeah. about the past and you think about the future, but mm-hmm. you just got to, to be present, you just got to be. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. You just have to be and just yeah. be still. And like you're spending like a, an absurd amount of time during your day in a, in a place, you know, like you're at work for eight hours a day, maybe even more for some people. But if you're there and you're not like invested in that and you come yeah. home, dude, you're not, you're not present. Mm-mm. Like, you know, some days, like when I come home from work, dude, I, it is tough to try to get myself to play with yeah. my son, you know, it's hard. And that's a, that's a horrible thing to admit. Yeah, but no, it's, it's hard to, and I think that's where like right now, shout out to my wife again for allowing me to, have this kind of freedom right now because she knows i'm just trying to bust my ass right now you know she knows it and i know it's hard for her to you know rarely like in the weekdays right now i'll wake up at six i'll get weights in for 45 minutes to an hour and then go to work okay work from nine to uh six usually nine Mm -hmm. to six and nine to six or to eight some it just depends car right, sales car right, hours right. are crazy but after that i'll try and get in like a 20 30 minute run uh just out there i'll just change my car and go run around out there and then get home and i'm at home at you know eight o'clock or something and it's tough now i'm gonna have to with the newborn baby now i'm trying to like get all that stuff in early in the morning right you know mm-hmm. even but, the run part yeah i'm gonna try but that yeah. was what i was gonna say is that little 20, 30 minutes after after work where I've been able to go run, number one, golden hour. It's sick AF, yeah, it's so right? It's just dude. running around. But two, it's just like when, I, when I'm running like that, I'm able to just talk and speak everything that's in my mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a, a form of meditation. Like, 100, 100%. Yeah. 100%. That's a, I think that's why... Because I started running. I actually just found a post. I posted it on Instagram uh, yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. It was like two pictures I took. Um, I was ru- I've been running on Main Street in Grapevine. Right. Because that's kind of wh- uh, where I sell cars over there in Grapevine. Yeah. And I used to live in Grapevine uh, near that area. And that's when I first started. That's when I got into running for the first time. Yeah. That was 2018. 2019, I think. I think it was 2019. And uh, I had a pitcher sitting on these steps on Main Street. And I was running the other day, and I saw that spot. And I was like, hey, that's dope. Wow, Because I, I remember I posted that picture. I was like, I have yeah. my first marathon in. Oh, no, I did see that yeah, picture. Yeah, I was like, okay, first yeah. marathon in 10 days or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. And that was four years ago when I first. And, but that's when I fell in love with running, right? I just found 
I went running one night and I found this like meditative state that I'd never been in before. Yeah. And I got done and I was like, that was amazing. You know, I felt I, I so, don't, I felt dude, so much running is such a, uh, but not even running, but you, you do things. You have forms of meditation or creativity yeah, like at, at outlet yeah. where you feel a certain way. You, you, you're vibrating a certain way you've never done before, yeah. or you only get from doing that activity. It's video editing, right? For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah everybody. That's what. Yeah, that's why I try to preach to people. I'm like, you don't have to run. Yeah, right. You can do whatever, right? But have that outlet, right? Have right. that outlet to be able to just empty yourself into. Yeah. Right. Where's what's where's anxiety come from? Worry of the future and like an excess amount of energy. Yeah. Right. Anxiety's natural as to keep us on our toes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For for the most part, obviously, there's times when it's just like eating at you, and you got a lump in your throat, and you can't do anything about it. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like that built up energy, you got to let it go. You have to let it go. Yeah. Right. And you so you have to have some like like that's like the cyclical nature of life. It's always you have to keep the river flowing. Right, you have to keep you have to keep the energy flowing. Yeah, blood pumps through your heart and down through your body. It's always flowing. Yeah, right? makes a lot of sense. Rain yeah. always it's a vap it's falling down. It's always flowing. Everything's a cycle in life, and so I don't even know what we were talking about at this point. Dude, that makes so much sense though. It's, right, yeah, but it's, like, but like with anxiety moving. to be anxiety, you're you're bottling stuff up. You have to let it go. Right. That's why in this book I was going to talk to you about. That's the yeah. that's one of the laws. That's the law of detachment. Right? The seven spiritual laws of success. Okay. How did you this, find uh, this book? Um, like a TikTok or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Something like I'm very open about my right like, like spiritual journey and research on the topics. Right. There's yeah. a handful of books I've read cover to cover. Right. Right. I, I love just gathering information from as many different sources as I can. But these, this is one of those books I came across. I literally every single day made time to sit down and just, I have, I filled up a fourth of this book right here, just taking notes Dang, on man. this book right here. There's seven laws. I'll go through them real quick. Yeah, of course. There, that's another thing, man. Journaling, that changed my life. Well, yeah, dude, like, whenever I look at you on, on, you know, just, I just see someone that's, like, strong, like, a, a strong-minded individual, and it, it, it doesn't take overnight to, no, to it that doesn't. to happen. It's it needs the to. only, and, I mean, I'm honored that you say that, you know, because yeah. in my, like, in my mind, it's just always, I don't even, ever, I've never labeled myself as a strong-minded person, you know, yeah. because... You don't have I to, I guess man. that's what I like. That's like the end of the road. Like when I'm looking down the road, I'm looking towards a strong-minded person, sure. Yeah. But like every single day we wake up, we should wake up an empty slate, right? And you yeah. can write down whatever you want and sculpt that day however you want to sculpt that day. And then you look back a month later and right every day, Right, every day was beautiful like that. Every day was what you made it. Yeah. Right. I heard somebody say the other day that you're always doing, you're always creating magic. Right. It's either good magic or bad magic, but yeah. you're always creating magic. Yeah. With your words and your thoughts, and right. That that's why we spell we spell words right because they're spells. Everything that comes out of our mouth has Probably energy to brain it. right now bro. bro everything that comes out of our mouth everything every thought we think we don't even have to verbalize it every thought we think and we the longer we think on it the more energy we give it yeah good or bad yeah good or bad it doesn't matter right mm -hmm. like feelings turn into thoughts and thoughts turn into words okay and, and it every, sounds so simple when you say yeah it, but, it sounds yeah. so simple you know but but I have not thought about it that way in like in I feel like ever, actually. I've never yeah. even like you saying it out loud is like of course duh. That's the thing. Saying stuff out loud, you have to. Yeah. If you never say that one I'll if anybody's ever seen me run and like have has been around me, 
that I didn't know of and they were like hiding or something, you know, they'd be like, this dude's weird as fuck. <laughs> okay. I taught, bro, I have videos. Pretty much every time I go on a run, I record just like selfie cam myself yeah. and just talk. Right. That's and cool. that's like my, that's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Cause that's my form of like therapy yeah. and meditation. Like you said, um, cause I, f cause it forces me to, cause like I'll go back and I'll listen to those videos. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, you sound like an idiot. You know, I'm I like, that too, sounds, dude. you know, I'm like, that sounds stupid. Don't say, don't say that again. Like no, you, no. you sound like a relate. dummy saying that. I have like little video logs where I, like I call it letters to myself. Yeah, and I'll just that's exactly the same, bro. Yeah, same. And, but my my point was like that it kind of forces you to speak like thoughtfully, right? And not waste your words. And we learn. And I've learned that, like I said, every single thing that comes out of your mouth has power. It's all like you everything's vibrations right you've you know you go into the rabbit hole of spirituality and you hear about like vibrationals vibrational forces right everything vibrates at a certain frequency and negative words vibrate at a cer certain frequency positive words of affirmation and love and and joy those vibrate at a certain frequency mm -hmm. and the more depending on what you speak that's what you attract there right? is like a yeah i did on the i have a meditation app and it does there is a little section for like vibrations i wonder if that's what that was talking about i hadn't listened to those yet but it talks about yeah it talks about vibrations yeah. and how like the, just the tone of what you're saying well, i mean you've seen like the little science uh, experiments where they'll have like a stream of water flowing and then like a speaker next to it yeah and depending on what frequency they're playing the water does different stuff uh, have you seen that i have to yeah bro go hop on youtube and yeah. just like look at it i'm gonna have to. and yeah. depending on i'm not a science expert i don't maybe using right, the right. wrong words you know here but like depending on what certain wavelengths hit it or frequencies hit the water it does different things right yeah and again like what we speak has certain frequencies if you there's many more experiments where they're like people have uh plants right and they say you go like say nice words yes, to this plant that one i have and say seen. mean words to that plant yeah and then when you say mean words to dies faster yeah yeah you that know? one is crazy that whenever i saw that and I, um and then i ended up looking it up like because it was a it was just a video and i was like what's the meaning behind this but yeah. there's actually some scientific right. facts behind yeah when what you say to the plant that that stuff you know that's like a rabbit hole that i yeah. feel like I, I could talk about forever but i'm not qualified right. to talk like so i just right. sound right. Just sound kind of stupid talking about it <laughs> not at all but, but i and mean people could research it themselves yeah you know? like it and I, i've gone past the point of caring what people think like i will right say whatever yeah dude. that right there sets you free yeah it, right yeah because i'm forever i'm forever a student of anything that, that interests me yeah anything that interests me I, i'll never consider myself a master of a topic yeah right and you're kind of also free to, like you don't i i feel like the you probably don't judge people anymore either right you're like it's, it's, dude we're all out here just trying to do the best we can yeah. man you know yeah. how am i to, how am i supposed to judge you if i don't know anything about your childhood your upbringing any traumatic experiences you've had that have shaped the way you see the world yeah Dude, we all we're all different and we're all just out here trying to do the best we can based off the things that have happened to us. Yeah. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah. And dude. so what's the point of judging people, man? Yeah. You know? And that yeah. I just I got mad love for everybody. Yeah, dude. You know? And I was I didn't always I wasn't always like that though. You know, I yeah, met it takes a there's while. like some influential people I met along the way that I admired the energy they gave off, right? And I can I can think off the top of my head, like two or three people exactly where I was, where I was like, you know, like this dude's woke, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, like, It's a little scary at first, yeah. but when you open yourself up to it, it's, I don't know, it can only do you good, I think. Going back to plants, 
That's why, like, when people get plants, they feel, you know, they take care of some plants. I used to have plants in my old apartment, and just, t- that was, I was like, I'm a plant guy now. I got plants, you yeah. know, <laughs> and just taking care of those plants, right, gave me such a sense of, like, lightness, Yeah, you know, and that's because giving to others raises, like, your, your energy, yeah. raises your frequency, yeah. And so just giving to anything, right? Giving to, I don't know, little bugs on the ground. Yeah. Or like your your child or your spouse yeah. or the people you work with. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The people I interact with on a daily basis. Give, like give, 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 yeah. give. That'll make you feel so much better about life, about wherever you are. Yeah. If you're always somewhere looking to take, just like, oh, what can I get today? What can I receive to make my life better? If you're always walking around like that, you're always going to be searching. You're yeah. going to spend your whole life looking for something that's not real. Yeah. Right? Because the real magic happens when you're just selflessly giving to other people. Yeah. I want to seg. We can segue into this. Yeah, I yeah, think my this bad, book, dude. like, no, no, no. Just like what we're talking about right now, like, perfectly fits with what this book is about. So it's called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. Um, and shout out Deepak Chopra. Okay. Super. I got like three or four of his books. This one though, I live and die by. So I'll just go through all seven. The first one, the law of pure potentiality. Okay. Basically it means like believing anything is possible within yourself, right? You are, you, you have the potential to accomplish anything. Um, And it's about killing the ego, right? The ego, the mask we wear around other people. Going back to being just as genuine as you can. I think that would solve every problem in the world. Yeah. If everybody could just be as genuine as possible with each other. Yeah. I mean. Because you can kind of feel it when someone's not. Bro, 100%. You're like. 100%. I came here. I came here and felt you know super open genuine energy Thanks, from man. you right away yeah, for sure you. yeah yeah and i really appreciate that <laughs> those are the kind of people i gravitate towards you know yeah. it's hard for me to have a conversation with somebody when i can tell they're like talking in a certain voice yeah that's not normal to them yeah or i mean you know you feel that from people yeah and it's hard to connect with those type of people you can't really pinpoint what it is but you, when something's off you can something's kind of, off yeah. you can feel it yeah the law. So we'll just go through this. The law of pure potentiality. The second one is the law of giving, right? I haven't opened this book, but I'd love to find something in here, right? This. I mean, these are little notes I have, like flowing blood. You must give and receive. That's what we were just talking about, right? The flow of yeah. life. You have to give, but you have to also graciously accept things. Yeah. You have to. You can't not accept things from people. You have to complete the cycle. Now it's not about now get gift like receiving something from somebody is not the same as looking around and taking things. What can I get today? Right. You're yeah. not looking for that. You're just being given something. Yeah. Right. How how shitty does that make you feel when you try to give somebody something? You're like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna surprise this person with this. And like, no, 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 no I don't I'm want good. it. Right. right yeah. Dude, I, been there. I got this for you. You know. Like, no, 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 no. I'm good. Like, I don't want anything you know? in return. So I'm you got to finish that cycle. Yeah. You got to finish the cycle and a circulation keeps everything alive. It keeps us vital, working out, moving, running. The two best things you can do to detox your body, breathe and sweat. <laughs> go breathe a lot and go sweat a lot. I promise you, you'll feel better. Circulate, yeah. keep everything moving. Yeah, I need to do that more. <laughs> the third law, the law of karma. I think that's a tough one that people don't think's real, but it's real, man, right? You yeah. have to do good um, to others. Every action generates a force of energy that will return to us in like kind. Yeah. What we sow is what we reap. That field out there will, whatever you plant, it'll grow. Yeah. It's really good at growing whatever you decide to plant in the field, but it's up to you. And if yeah. you plant bad stuff, you'll fill your life up with bad stuff. If you plant good stuff, you'll fill your life up with good stuff. But it's up to you, right? 
it's like this is an analogy i like to think about all the time is being in a dark room Mm -hmm. and there's a light bulb right in the little pulley or switch or something Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. by doing nothing at all the room's dark and we're filled in darkness and our life's dark okay like think about this in our mind okay it's dark in our mind all we have to do is go pull that switch and turn the light on that's all we have to do and everything changes we can see everything but we have to act on it yeah we have to act and we have to be the one to turn it on it's not hard to turn it on but yeah. you have to do it yeah that's the difference between the darkness and the light the yeah. darkness happens you don't have to do anything you don't have to do anything it will always be there yeah but to turn the light on it's almost effortless but you have to act on it still right it's not going to turn itself on right and every day every day consistently every day every thought right like we got two voices in our we got the little angel on each shoulder right and they each have a thought yeah they each have a thought with everything that happens they each have a thought and it's up to you to decide which path you want to take yeah right yeah another good book um i've read is called Man, I'm going to shout this one out because this one's good. I listened to this on audio. Um, But it talks about we are not, um, here we go. We are not our thoughts. It's okay to have thoughts. We are not our thoughts. We are the observer of our thoughts. And that right there, you can just like spiral down. That's a, that'll kind of get your mind racing right there. It's called the power of now yeah no it's called yeah it's the power no the untethered soul by michael a singer the untethered soul by michael a singer and he talks about how we are not our thoughts we are the observer of our thoughts so it's up to you to choose it's okay to have bad thoughts you know but but realize that but realize that's that's not you yeah right you've ever been sitting next to somebody you love and you're like i could stab you in the face with this knife right here (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> no you haven't thought not that, that you not, know not, okay, or yeah. you're driving down the road and you're like dang i could just if i wanted to just drive Swear. off this bridge right here yeah you know like yeah. that's crazy yeah right but that's not you you just think that right, right. you're this right. you're just the observer yeah the fourth law in this book is the law of least effort and this was a hard one for me to understand um because i thought just initially reading it i was like you're telling me not to try like what are you what are you doing but all right so nature's intelligence functions with effortless ease with carefreeness harmony and love you go look into a forest right just envision this beautiful forest and a waterfall right nothing's struggling out nothing's trying to be it just is okay nothing's trying to be it just is and when we harness the force of harmony harmony is a big word i've been on this week Um, joy and love we create success and good fortune with effortless ease and again harmonies a huge word i've been on this week thinking of like work what i was talking about earlier how i feel like all these different aspects of my life right now are intertwined in each other Mm -hmm. it's not about choosing what to be good at Mm -hmm. right it's not about i want to be good in the workplace so i have to sacrifice this and this yeah it's not about well for the longest time i didn't want to change careers because i didn't want to give up my fitness journey how selfish is that it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like, that it's it's you. Is, right <laughs> but yeah. once i learned how to live in harmony with everything that's when life became just so fun so much fun yeah and i feel like right now i'm in harmony with my home life, with my wife, with work, right? With my kid and my kid to come and with my fitness journey. I feel like they're all in harmony. And the law of least effort states that with carefreeness and harmony and love, right? We get good fortune with effortless ease. Yeah, so like you, you're you you're not in a mindset where you're seeking for more right now? I I feel like I've already... Hold on, we'll go to chapter five. 
Okay. This is incredible, bro. We'll go to chapter five. Okay, let's fast forward to chapter six. I want to talk about the chapter six, the law of detachment. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay. In detachment lies the wisdom of uncertainty. In the wisdom of uncertainty lies the freedom from our past, from the known, which is the prison of past conditioning. And in our willingness to step into the unknown, the field of all possibilities, we surrender ourselves to the creative mind that orchestrates the dance of this universe. So what did you just ask me? You said, like, do I feel like I'm not seeking for more? Yeah, are you in a mindset where you're, you're content? To answer your question is like, yes, I'm seeking for more. But I've already detached myself from that thought. So with the law of detachment, it kind of states, like, let it be known your desires. State them, proclaim them out loud, and then sit them to the side right and everything will happen have you ever been so just like just for lack of a better term balls deep in something right that mm -hmm. you're super passionate about mm -hmm. and maybe you you're not getting the progress you want and you kind of put it to the side for a little bit yeah and then and all then of a sudden back. you go back and you're just like yeah. profoundly better yeah right yeah or not even like putting it down completely and picking it up again but kind of just like turning the volume down a little bit yeah and then maybe you gain like a a, a new a path of cert of a like perspective visual of clarity yeah right so back to chapter five is the law of intention and desire and this kind of feeds into that right inherent in every intention and desire is the mechanics for its fulfillment intention and desire in the field of pure potentiality have infinite organizing power and when we introduce an intention in the fertile ground right we plant those seeds of pure potentiality we put this infinite organizing power to work for us in the beginning there was desire which was the first seed the first seed of mind having meditated in their hearts have discovered by their wisdom the connection of the existent with the non-existent yin and yang yeah right everything's opposites everything mirrors each other the last law right here is the law of dharma and this is one i'm still kind of working on i haven't really got this one down completely but dharma kind of is like your life's purpose okay everyone has a purpose in life a unique gift or special talent to give to others um, and when we blend this unique talent with service to others we experience the ecstasy and exultation exultation i'm sorry of our own spirit which is the ultimate goal of all goals and so that's one i'm still trying to kind of digest um, especially right like a unique gift or special talent to give to others yeah right yeah um that's one i've always struggled on because i don't know what it is i give to others um but i know it's something yeah. right um and not to say we only have one gift we can give right like one gift you're giving me right now is you know welcome me on the podcast your your, your video skills yeah. that's a gift you give to others and i'm doing it because the way you made me feel when you were sharing your stories about and i want to it might not have been that book but the ideas were the same ideas were in the book that you were sharing at yeah. the time and i wanted other people to see that um so that's why i mean i'm what you gave me was inspiration of direction yeah. in life a little bit man like it, thanks in a time where i was kind of like Loss, but not in a sense of like, not like a sad loss. You yeah. know, I was kind of just lost in the sense of like, what am I doing? Kind of a lull. Yeah, what am I, what am I doing? Honestly, and that's then, the, uh, I think that's sometimes the worst place to be. Yeah. When you're not sad and you're not happy. Yeah. Yeah. Because rock bottom is a awesome freaking place to be. Rock yeah. bottom <laughs> is a awesome place to see, be see only you could say that and like you were well, you might you 
don't know this right now, but you're as you're saying this, you're speaking to somebody and it's making a difference in their Dude. life, man. Because we that, again, we good. all we there's who am I to say the most traumatic thing to ever happen to you is not as traumatic as the most traumatic thing to ever happen to me. Yeah. It's, that is the most traumatic thing that has ever happened to me. That's the most traumatic feeling I've ever felt. You have that too. We all have it, yeah. right? We all have these stories. Um, you know, you could get a room of 20 people and everybody would have a super sad story to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think the saddest thing, and I was there for like eight years, the saddest thing, the saddest story is the one of just just kind of eh. It's kind of just like an eh story. Right. It's not super sad. It's not super happy. It's just kind of comfortable. Yeah. Kind of, you make, you make some good money, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of, I go home. Yeah, life's good. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. You know? That's so true, bro. <laughs> I think that's sad. That's the sad story. You brought Pe- to something there. <laughs> what would, all right, out of the, out of these three movies, which one would you want to watch the least? A movie about this dude just kicking ass. A movie about somebody that's just going through the worst day of their life. Or the movie about a guy just on his day off from work. Just kind of like running errands and stuff. That last one. You know, because there's no... It doesn't matter. No, yeah. What's the point? What's the point of living? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And again, circulation. Okay. Yeah, there's no movement there. No, that right there, you're just hang. You're in the lazy river, and yeah. you're just hanging on the wall. Yeah. And everybody's going past you, and you're just right there hanging on the wall. Yeah. And every now and then, something good comes by, and oh, you reach for it, and maybe you grab it, or maybe you miss it. And if you miss it, you're like, eh, and it just wasn't meant for me. And you're still just hanging on the wall, looking for something else to come by. Yeah. I don't know what you're looking for in a lazy river, but you get my reference. I do. Right? Yeah, maybe, and like, <laughs> maybe a floaty or something. Yeah. But rock bottom's a great place to be. It wasn't until I accepted I was at rock bottom that my life got better. Yeah, it Mentally, spiritually, physically. They say it's only when you've lost everything that you're free to do anything. But And maybe it's just a like a switch in your head. Maybe you don't actually have to physically lose everything. Yeah. And that's where like my that's where my spiritual journey, I think, has been the most influential thing to ever happen. Like to to mold my life. Yeah. That alone, I think I really you can call it like a spiritual awakening or whatever foo foo like magic term you want to use. Yeah. But I see the world differently now than I did six years ago. And not even in a sense of like, obviously you look back six years ago, you're like, yeah, I see, uh, you know, I'm smarter now. Yeah. But like my, the way I see other people, the way I see people's energy, like a complete death of the ego and like perception just switch. Right. And, yeah. and that was about, that was probably only like three years ago. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. The death of the ego was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I think it's an ongoing thing. I don't think anyone like right. conquers their ego. Right, right. And they're like, oh, no, I don't have an ego. I beat my ego. Because that's the ego. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. That's the ego right there to think yeah. you beat the ego. So how are you cultivating it on a daily basis? Like what are you, What are I don't know, like you said, like your actions, right? What are you, obviously you're running every day. Yeah. You're working out every morning. Yeah. I really try to capitalize on alone time. I've always needed that just as an individual. Um, You know, some people recharge in social environments. Some people recharge by themselves. We're just different. Some people are just built different, right? Yeah. And I've always just enjoyed solitude. I've never been, I'm never bored by myself. I'll say that. I could spend, you know, I could spend a week alone and probably not say a word to anybody or myself. I Maybe. believe it, dude. I'm I just I I've always enjoyed being alone. Yeah. And not that I don't enjoy when other people are around me. Yeah. Because I enjoy that too. I love that. But yeah. I can't if I'm alone, if I'm by myself, 
I'm not gonna be like, hey, I'm bored. What are you doing? You know, I'm just chilling <laughs> by myself. So but I uh, feel like even that takes skill, right? Because I I feel like people out there can say sometimes. the same thing, but it's scary sometimes. Yeah, but people that can say like I enjoy being alone, what they mean is like they I feel like people are on their phone, like they're just like, mm-hmm. you know consuming kind kind of information, so, and that's their alone time. But that's not a healthy alone time, no, in my opinion. No, and and it requires the skill. I, Bro, I don't I'm know on my I phone could. too much. I wouldn't like I'm on my phone a lot. I think, and yeah. I think if you're a human being and you. You're like, no, I'm not on my phone. You're you're lying. No, I'm on my phone. <laughs> you're lying, yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, and you know, sure, some of it is just nonsense. And like, I pick up my phone and open Instagram. I'm like, what am I doing? Why did I just open Instagram? Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, like, why? What? What made me do that? Um, but a lot of it is, which what I think I've done a good job at. Your your social bubble is like your own little world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. My mom. Her social bubble is like family from Louisiana. That's her Facebook bubble. I don't have that same Facebook bubble. Yeah. You don't have the same Facebook yeah. or Instagram bubble or whatever. So that's one thing you can kind of cultivate is what are you choosing to be put to on consume, there? To yeah. consume on there. And yes, dude. yeah, in, social media does not have to be a bad, bad thing. thing. It does not. It's That's your social media. And if you choose to look at nonsense all day long, that's on you. I love following, you know, stoicism pages. And I love hearing David Goggins talk shit to me on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> you, you are David Goggins. You know, bro. yeah, like stuff like that. Like that stuff gets me fired up. You know, like that's kind yeah. of, I don't want to say, I guess some people may look at that and say like that's weak minded that you need like a motivational video to get you fired up. I'm like, I don't need it to get me fired up, but to know that there are other human beings that were born this big, just like you, that have shaped themselves into just creatures. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like they're no better than you. And I think that's that's almost that is what gets me is like seeing other people like playing the game and you're just sitting on the sideline watching them and you're like, why don't I get to play? Like nobody, ne- nobody ever said you couldn't play. No one stopped. No one ever said you couldn't play. You just sit there and you're too scared to hop in. Yeah, dude. What an awesome perspective. This whole time I've kind of been looking at social media as kind of an enemy, but it sounds like you've embraced it and that you've, it's, I mean, that's a dude, my, entirely my, new my, perspective uh, my saved, on Instagram, you know, you can go to like your yeah. saved post and see all that. That's like my notebook too, right? Anytime I see something that, like I see, you know, come across a post and it just hits me, boom, save. And so if I'm ever, you know, you can't live off motivation. That's yeah. not that's not realistic. Right. But sometimes it's nice yeah. to go in there and get like, all right, all right, let's go. You yeah. know, see a little video to pump you up. I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah, I'll go through my save things, and it's not all motivational stuff. It's some, you know, like spiritual related stuff, right. or you know, maybe like a cool just DIY project at home. You know, but like I'm yeah. always filling that up with like stuff that interests me. If yeah. I come across something, so I can look back. Um, I think not. We give our like not taking notes, not saving stuff, is shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. I uh, so I'm having a dude. Are you blowing my mind right now? I, I may be all you, over the place. No, not at all. But dude. I feel it's all stuff that like really speaks with me. Yeah, and you're answering the questions to the core. You, of you my, right here. You're getting the last uh, four or five years of thoughts all thrown at you right now. So it's great, man. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you taking all this. Yeah, you're giving me perspectives that I never even thought to look at, and it's uh. This isn't this is an episode I'm going to be watching. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> kind of yeah. over and over again. Um, so so be vulnerable with me for a second on on a on an off day. Yeah. Right. Because we all I feel like we all have off days. Yeah. What do you do to kind of, you know, put yourself back on on the. On the way you live like your life. Like kind of get my head back. Yeah. Action. Okay. It, action creates. The feeling you want to feel. God, do you make it sound so simple? <laughs> that sometimes it, it, it is that is. simple. Yeah. Like going on runs. They don't have no they do not have to be record breaking runs. 
No one ever said you have to go out there and just be Superman. But I promise you, if you go out, and even if it's just a like foot after foot shuffle, go do that for 20 minutes, I promise you, you'll feel better. Right? Action creates energy. Yeah. Um, so on days where I don't feel good, I don't really, I wake up and I'm not motivated. I'm still going to do, I'm still going to go to the gym and work out because I know 100% I'll feel better after that. Okay. And then I'm going to go to work and then I'm going to go run after work. And if I still don't feel better after all that, then I know I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and it's going to be another day and I'll give it another try. All right. Wow. That's the, again, detach, uh, law of detachment. Okay. Yeah. Life has up and downs, yin and yang. The bad days are going to come 100% all the time. They're going to come. You're never going to live a happy life consistently for the rest of your life. Yeah. There's going to be bad days. And it's not about trying to get rid of the bad days. That's not up to you. It's about just knowing that you're in them, finding any beauty at all in them, anything at all. Anything that, if I wake up and I'm not feeling it, I'm like, damn, I'm gonna hop in the journal and just write for like two or three sentences. Yeah. Just, I'm grateful for I'm grateful for this life. Something as simple as that, just putting pen to paper, okay? Or just, I mean, going about your daily life knowing that this too shall pass. Everything will pass. Have you ever thought about sharing these men? Like I have, like- but I've always I actually how I told you I like record myself when yeah. I run. I had a I would love to see all of that, <laughs> bro. I, I'll share it with you. Um, yeah, dude, just, I feel I'll like share it be with a you. Gold mine. <laughs> yeah, it's four years worth of stuff, man. It's crazy. I yeah. and I saved it I all. Like your sense of awareness is probably super high. Like it's all. Yeah. It's, I've never, I never want to put a, like a cap on anything though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I was listening to something this morning and like, how long do you think you would live if you didn't know what the life expectancy was? Do you think you would live a longer life if you knew that humans live to be an average of 75 years old? Or do you think you would live a longer life thinking you were going to live forever? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Okay. But what was your question? What did you say? Because that segued into that. I was commenting on your your sense of awareness. It's probably super high. Oh, yeah. But like putting a cap on things. Yeah. You know, I don't want to put a cap on anything like that. So it could be higher is what I'm saying, I guess. Right. But by doing stuff like that, by talking out loud to myself, I guess that's how I heighten my sense of awareness. Because it's real easy. It's real easy to agree with your mind, with your brain. Yeah. Right? Your brain says something. It's real easy to agree with your brain. It's hard to disagree with it, though. Yeah. Because to disagree with it, you have to provide evidence. Yeah. And that means you have to talk to yourself. Okay? Yeah. It's real easy to agree with it. All you have to do is say, yeah. But if you have a bad thought and you disagree with it, now he's like, okay, why do you disagree? Please explain. That takes work. And so by doing all that, it helps me filter out stuff that like heightens my awareness, stuff that is not helping me. But again, going back to like good and bad days, I love the bad days. That, that thought right there. I love the bad days just as much as I love the good days. That changed my life alone. That thought right there changed my entire perspective on life that wiped out anxiety that wiped out like thinking about the past thinking about the future obviously i still do it but bad thoughts come and go bad days come and go good days come and go best day of your life isn't going to last forever worst day of your life isn't going to last forever but i bet you learned something from both of them But a mediocre day, you don't learn anything from that. You only learn by doing stuff. You only learn by experiencing things. I was having a talk with a older gentleman I work with. He's like 50, 55. Um, he sells cars too. 
And I was telling him, I was like, dude, I'm just the type of person you can give me all of the advice that you want but the only thing that makes things click in my mind is me physically doing them right like i have to make that mistake myself yeah i only make the mistake once i'll promise myself that i will only make that mistake once yeah but i have to do it right that's how i've always been my whole life and maybe that's something i can get better at right but at the same time going back to quitting my job i knew The universe was whispering at me. I knew 100% certain that by walking out of my job right there, I'd find something better. It took me five months, and I went through hell, but I knew I had to force myself out of that situation so that I could experience what it was like to be just completely broken. And so during those four months where I was just in the shitstorm, I knew I did that to myself, and I knew it was for a reason. There was one night, I always turned back to this night. I was running. This was probably two years ago, maybe. Going back to proclaiming things and speaking them into existence. I was by myself running. It was like, I used to do my runs at like 11 p.m. at night because when I bartended, I got home late, whatever. Yeah, that was probably a more difficult routine if I... Yeah, but it was like a... I love running when it's dark outside, though, because it's like that sense of like you're just by yourself, man. But I remember one night, it was a full moon, and I was running, and I just stopped in the middle of the street. I stopped in the middle of the street, and I literally looked up at the sky, and I said, I proclaim this out loud for, you know, summarizing, like, I want to grow as a person as much as I possibly can, spiritually, mentally, physically. And I asked the universe, this may sound silly to some, but I spoke out loud to the full moon. I asked the universe to start presenting me hard battles, start presenting me things for me to overcome. I didn't know what they were, but I, right there I had my hands open and I just accepted any difficulty, any difficulty into my life because I knew that that's the only way that I learn from things is by physically doing them. So whether that, whether that actually did anything or not, from that moment on, any time I go through something hard, I think back to that time. And I'm like, you literally asked for this. And then I feel like a little you know, pansy if I don't do it. <laughs> you yeah, know, I'm like, you yeah. literally asked for this. This is the key to changing your entire life. So, why are you scared of a, a hard time? Yeah. This too shall pass. Everything's yeah. going to pass. Your life's going to gonna keep going. <laughs> it's, uh, it all sounds so simple, you know? It does, dude. I, I'm so glad we're talking today. <laughs> Me too, man. I feel like I kind of just needed to hear a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, it's good to talk about it, too. Yeah. It's good to say stuff like that, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But um, it, it just, I know, uh, I already know, like, you know, it's not as easy as what you're saying, but it, I can tell that you've, like, worked at this for, like, years. Yes. And that's kind One of, thing I've always struggled with is, this goes back to, like, my first relationship in high school. <laughs> you know, I was always told I don't talk enough. I've never been very, like, prolific. Is that the right word to use? I'm not sure what that word means. I've never been able to verbalize my thoughts as well as I've wanted to. Really? That's hard to believe. (laughs) But I've, you know, maybe to you, it sounds like I do, but, and that goes back to not putting a cap on things. I feel like I could, I feel like I could express what I'm feeling in such a more clear and concise way. But that keeps me just always trying to work on it though. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When I find something that works, I kind of jot it down. But it helps talking to people, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So this is good, man. I like this. Yeah, dude. I, I appreciate you having me. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to appreciate what you're saying today. Like, and it's going to make a lot of impact in a lot of people's I think lives. the biggest thing, man, is 
And this goes from this comes from a Mike Tyson YouTube clip with his podcast, but this video just resonates. This clip just resonates with me all the time. Um, and it hit me when I first watched it just at a very vulnerable time in my life. But he talks about, um, how pretty much life's not life without the good and the bad. That's what makes life beautiful. That alone is what makes life beautiful. Why can't life be good all the time? Yeah. Right. Why yeah. can't life be good every day when we wake up? Because that's not life. Yeah. Life is a mixture of happiness and sadness and anger and grief and joy and and love and caring and hatred and like negative thoughts. Right. Yeah. Um, and we have to kind of do a balancing act. Yeah. And it's up to us to kind of adjust those sliders. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And master all emotions. Right? right? Learn learn to master hatred so you know how to use it. Yeah. Right? Um and, and dude, in your in your journey of spiritual uh, in your spiritual journey, were you ever at any point overwhelmed by the amount of awareness that you have? No, because no. I don't think I I don't, f it's in, in my, in my <laughs> mind, I'm like right here, you know, I still have so much more to go. Yeah. Like I definitely know that I'm more aware than I used to be, Yeah. but that's all I base it on. It's all just a journey of you versus you, yeah. you know, again, physically, mentally, spiritually, it's all you versus you. Yeah. No one else matters. You can use other people per, for perspective and ideas and you know, oh that's good you know yeah. oh i see he did that i'm gonna try that right right but it's not out of a place of like despite right i don't i don't despise you for doing that i'm like oh that's a good idea good for you i'm mm -hmm. gonna try that now right yeah, okay yeah. yeah and it's not it, it's not from a place of like like worshiping someone either like you're just bro never like that never idolize never be starstruck yeah Never be starstruck because that takes away from your own power. Yeah. I learned that in high school, and I think that is something that kind of shaped my, like, stoic attitude or perspective on life. Yeah. Is, you know, never be starstruck because, again, we're all born the same. Obviously, like, how much money your family has or whatever that changes right but like to the core though you may be you know we have people of all shapes and sizes yeah but like consciously we're all just these single consciousness yeah we all start the same yeah. and so how silly is that to look at another human being and be like oh my gosh that must be so nice look at that oh my god that's amazing how could a human do that 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 stuff just baffles me yeah you know right i'm like have you even tried you know right. i don't ever expect to be lebron james all right but that's not going to stop me from you know trying to be a good basketball player mm -hmm. i'm never going to be usain bolt but i'm it's not going to stop me from going to run because his journey doesn't matter to me. Yeah. That's not, that's his journey. That's this his is journey. my journey. Right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, when we leave this world, when we lose all of our senses, okay, lose your sense of touch. And this is like a crazy thought experiment right here. Lose your sense of touch. All right. I take that away. I take away your sense of smell. And now I've take, I've took away your ability to talk. Now I'm going to take away your ears. You can't hear anything. And now I'm going to take away your eyes. You can't see anything. And you have no arms. You have no legs. But you're still, there's still something there. Right? You're still there. You're still a conscious being. You're not dead yet. Right. But all your senses are gone. You can't smell anything, hear anything, taste anything, speak. But you're still there. And so that right there speaks volumes into what should you really be working on in this life. Yeah. What should you really be focusing on in this life? 
We need to be, we need to be cultivating. We need to be creating the observer. That's who we need to be focused on the most. Yeah. And that's what I think my journey has been about is shaping the observer within me. Yeah. And so I'm not, I will, you know, be the first to say that I have bad thoughts and I have intrusive thoughts and I'm lazy and I pull up to the gym and I sit on my phone for 15 minutes sometimes. That's just what I do, right? But that's not who I am, Yeah. right? Yeah. Because I'm still the observer looking down on all that. How am I able to judge that if that's who I am? Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Right? Yeah. I want to say it makes sense. I'm, I'm barely grasping the... Like if I, had a, if I had a bad thought, right? Say you have an intrusive thought um, that you want to kick your dog down the stairs, okay? Is that you or is that... Where, did you just observe that you had that thought? Because yeah. you didn't act on it, right? Yeah, yeah. But you, you're you aware yeah. that you had that thought. Yeah. You're like, ooh, that was dark. I probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. That's you. That's the observer right there. Okay? So we have like three levels. Okay? Mind, body, and spirit. Those are the three levels of life. And the spirit controls the mind and the mind controls the body. And it's in that order. And what we do with the body affects the spirit. Again, it's a circle. It's a yeah. cycle. Yeah. Um, but they're all three important. And I think that if I could summarize my life right now, I would say I'm trying to grow each sector of my life um, in harmony with one another. Grow my spirit, spiritually, my spiritual journey. I want to grow my mind. I want to strengthen my mind to be more resilient. I want to like I want to be more compassionate and loving to everyone around me. I want to be vulnerable. I want to be genuine. But I also want right in my body, right? I want to I'm so grateful to have this like vessel to move around in. Yeah. I see people that are completely out of shape and it's not, I don't look at them and I'm like, oh, you slob. I'm just like, I wish you knew what it felt like. Cause I've, again, this is, I've, I'm the most fit I've ever been in my entire life. And it's come from hard work. It's not like, cause I used to be a very, I, I was skinny, but I couldn't run. Right. I was slow. Mm -hmm. I had no cardiovascular endurance. I was I was small. I was weak. I wasn't strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, I grew into this, but I know how good I feel now that I've created this. Like the feeling it gives off on a daily basis, and the feeling I get from knowing I put in, I put in eight years of work, working out almost every day for eight years. Yeah. And there's some dudes that are out there that just look like monsters and are way, you know, in more in better shape than me. But again, that's not what it's about. It's yeah. about I know how far I've come, right? And yeah. I know how good I feel, and I know everything's intertwined. Yeah, everything's intertwined. Yeah, your mind and body and spirit are all one. The universe, we're all one. Yeah, like we are the universe. That's another thing this book talks about is, is we are, we are God. God is in you. I'm gonna have to get that book, bro. I'll, let, <laughs> I'll hand you can keep it right now and give yeah, it, I'll give read it, it and yeah, give it back to me I later. I will give it back to you, yeah. But That's we wild. are the universe. We are God. Mm -hmm. Everything is in you. Any healing you need is in you, right? You need to go to therapy. Go to therapy. But you, the healing is inside you. You're gonna heal when you let that out. Yeah therapist is going to bring that to your awareness but it's up to you to heal yourself yeah right you want to transform your body that's in you you yeah. want to transform your spirit that's in you we are the the like the grand masters of our life yeah and it really just is as simple as going to the light switch and just pulling the light that's wild that's so simple um I was writing earlier, and it's a, a prompt that I've given myself. When just a, I just have a list of questions in my 
in my notes, but yeah. um, I'm, I'm curious to see what your answer would be. Uh, and I'll tell you mine, I guess, afterwards. Right, let's um, do it. But the question is, if you could go back in time and tell your 20-year-old self something, what would it be? Like, attack life and don't wait for things to happen. You don't have to know how to do things, but you have to start them. It has to be up to you to start things. That's what I would tell myself. I would say, hey, Bradley, just do stuff. Life gets better when you do stuff. Yeah. That's what I would tell myself. That's what's up, man. <laughs> don't judge me for my answer. What's um, your answer? I... I <coughs> I wrote a bunch of things, and at the end of it, I said I would probably just pass up on the opportunity and yeah. just not say anything at all. Yeah. And just let the 20-year-old, because at the end of the day, it's in some weird way their life. Yeah, I like that. I think. Because yeah. that's the uncertainty. Yeah. You kind of need that, you know? Yeah. At one point, I, that's I wrote. That's a good answer. You think? Yeah. Thanks, man. Because <laughs> that's. definitely not attack life. Because, like, like, what would happen, man, if you just, you know. If you just knew the answers. Yeah. At one point I wrote, like, do you, would it make a difference if I had, I if know. I do say something to, I to that, to my 20 year old self, you know? Would Maybe it, just a hug and be like, it'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Keep that's, going, man. that's what yeah. I would do. I'd, I'd probably be like a slap on the butt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Like, I would slap dude, on, I'd dude. slap myself on the butt and be like, dude, just get ready, man. Yeah. You know, get ready. Yeah. Uh, on the flip side, let's go to, you know, you in five years. What yeah. would you tell yourself in five years? Me in five years? If I was to, like, travel in the future? Yeah. Or, like, a, like a message in a bottle? Yeah, yeah. I would remind myself to stay grounded and enjoy everything for what it is. That's it. Because yeah. life's... There's gurus out there that want to try and overcomplicate healing or your spiritual wokeness, mm -hmm. but it's all it's really simple. And you just have to stay grounded and just love everything for as it is, what it is. Yeah. And give, wow, dude. right? What would you tell yourself? Um I don't know. I hope you figured out what you wanted to do. <laughs> like, are you? Yeah. I'd probably ask, like, did you figure out what you wanted to do? Or like, is it about figuring it out? Or is it about saying, hey, did you try everything you wanted to try? Yeah. Did you, yeah. I'd probably ask him right. that. Yeah. Like, hey, did you try everything you wanted to try? Because in that, I'm sh you'll find something yeah. that sticks, you know? Did you go where you wanted to go? Did you go where you wanted to go? Have you seen what you wanted to see? Yeah. What Why have you even? What have you seen that you didn't expect? Yeah. You know what I want to start doing that I've been so close the last couple of times and I just haven't. But there's times when I'm uh, there near near my apartments. There's a like a retirement community. And depending on like which path I take to go run sometimes, yeah. excuse me, I see old couples like walking together and so bad. I'm going to do it next time I see somebody now that we're talking about it, but I want to just pull up on them and just be like, Hey guys, you know, introduce myself and ask them like that question. Be like, if you could tell your 20, 25 year old self one thing, what would it be? Dude, and these people are complete say. strangers and I don't know them. They don't know me. But I feel like that's when people are the most genuine. Yeah. 100%. And so next time I see somebody, like next time I see a couple walking, I'm going to ask them. Dude, let me know what they say. Yeah. Really I'll try and know. record it. I'm going to try to keep my phone down. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one comes from, uh, who was it? Um, do you know Mershon Scott? Maybe. I, don't know. No. I told him I would be interviewing you. And okay. Like, ask him what his resting heart rate is. What is your resting uh, heart rate? I think like 45 beats Jeez, a minute. Jeez, Louise. Is yeah. that? Bro, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> there like is pro athlete level, I think, right? This, this, the the zone, zone two cardio, man. 
What does that mean? <laughs> so your zone two cardio is an aerobic base where you can have conversation, right? So if I'm running and record myself talking, okay? which you do, like you, yeah, like, yeah, like mile that's two. zone two cardio. They say you should get about Dr. Peter Atia, I think is his name. He's all over all over the podcast world, yeah. um, but he talks about. I think it's like 190 minutes a week of zone two cardio is what you should aim to get. And that's when my running, uh, I guess like fitness level increased the most is when, so about a year ago now, I like shattered my ankle. And like this right one right here, you can kind of see on the outside, it's a little more fat than the left one still. It's okay, yeah, can yeah. you tell? Yeah. Um, I was playing basketball and just heard a snap, man. Jeez. And... So honestly, the last like year has been like a rehab journey for me too. Um, oh my god! Because it got to the, I couldn't even like squat, like do a body weight squat. I had no range of motion in my ankle. I didn't go to the doctor, and so I think all the scar tissue just kind of like casted itself. Yeah. And so I still have like kind of some like range of motion issues there. Um, but anyways. What was my point? What were you asking? Um, yeah, you you resting heart rate. So my runs, to... um, I used to I used to run like an average eight mile run, seven thirty, seven forty five mile somewhere in there. It's pretty fast that's for me fast. for me personally. Yeah, like, that's fast for it. now. I'm running like eight thirty, sometimes like eight forty five nine minute miles. Okay, but when I when I broke my ankle. I waited like a couple weeks and I don't think I fully broke it, but it was right. bad. It's, like my leg was trembling yeah. and it was black there's and blue. A, yeah. And like, there's, there's still a size wool. difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, so something happened but I got there. to the point where I could run in a straight line. Now I couldn't like cut and stuff, but I was like, okay, I can go outside and I can hobble like an 11 minute pace in a straight line. I can do that. So I started running like that. And so those slow, slower zone two runs became more common for me. And now I'm to the point where I can run a 8.15 minute per mile pace all through my nose, only nose breathing, which is hard, and be done with the run and have my heart rate down back to normal in like a minute. Right. And, but that is, was like the awakening where I was like, oh my God, zone two cardio. Run slow. It's good for you. Right. Like 80% of my runs are like zone two cardio. And then probably 10% of them are like speed work where I'm running as fast as I can. And then the other 10% is, uh, they're called like fartlek runs. So you kind of just go out and you do strides pretty much. Right. Right. But most of my most of my runs now are in that like eight thirty nine minute range, just looking at the sunset and just enjoying being out there. But yeah, that 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 has helped my like cardiovascular health more than anything else. That's awesome, dude. That's like I think I think that's a welcoming thing to runners, yeah. to welcoming people in the running community. It doesn't you don't have to go out there and break records. That's not what it's about. Yeah. But yeah. 45, like, that's like Justin Ga Gaethje one time. Like, I think like, there was an interview where he said yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, bro. It's pretty lit. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty up. sick because, <laughs> like, I used to not have good cardiovascular health. And so, like, it's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, walk us through um, signing up for your first marathon. Like, yeah, dude. even making that decision to, to do that because it's, what, 26 miles? 26.2. Yeah. 26.2 miles. I was miles. in bed one night, and I was like, Wait, is that right. what's behind people's cars? 26.2, yeah. yeah. Or 13.1 is a half marathon. You'll see that, too. I see the 20. Yeah. Okay. I've always wondered. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, 2019, wow. I did my first marathon, Irving Marathon, and I had not ran more than 12 miles at a time when I signed up for that. The furthest run I ever did was 13 miles. So 13, yeah, 13 miles. Yeah. And I why, went in why there. Did you, like, not why. I mean, in the 
from someone who doesn't run at all. Yeah. You know, and I, I mean, I've always wanted. I just had one run one night. I had one run where I felt such a sense of euphoria. It literally changed my life. As simple as that. I had the right yeah. song on. The moon was bright. And I was on a dark road late at night by myself. And I felt energy flow through my whole body. And that got me hooked right there. And I was like, this is sick. I love this. And then now I would say now I'm the most consistent I ever have been running. I have a goal this year to run a thousand miles, which not, if you break it down, it's only like three miles a day. That's still some days I'll run more. Some days I'll run less yeah. right now. I think I'm a little off pace just cause life's been busy. Got a baby almost here. I'm trying yeah. to figure out the right schedule and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, that's my goal this year. It's a thousand miles. Um, and I think I can do more than that, but that's just like a, a good consistent number to hit. I've never ran a thousand miles in a year before, right? And to do it with a baby on the way, man, yeah. it'd be an accomplishment. That's lit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was thinking the other day, like when my kids get older, be able to run with me because I'm gonna be running until I'm, you know, eighty, yeah. man, right? So first marathons in 2019, and then what was that like? Did you? Did so you I like, like, made it to. Like, you have to train for that, right? Like, I thought so. I thought I could just grind it out, though. Oh, okay. So I did it. I was like, I'll figure it out, man. I'll grind it out. I made it 13 miles in. The course, had, there was a storm the night before. Oh, shit. So instead of it being a full out and back, mm -hmm. it was a double loop. Okay, okay. Right? So I did a 13-mile loop back to the finish line, saw everybody two and a half hours later, and I was like, damn, I have to do that again. <laughs> and went back out i think i like you know messed some stuff up in my feet it was hard to walk uh i finished that race in like five and a half hours like there were some out of shape people that beat me in that race and it was pretty humbling i was like i actually have to train for this okay yeah i did some half marathons in there uh about a year and a about la la last february i did that same race but i did the half marathon and ran like a 7.25 mile, yeah. minute per mile pace, and just killed that race. And that got me fired up. I did the Cowtown Half Marathon um, like a few months after that, and ran about the same time. And then the next weekend, I did uh, the Little Rock Marathon in Arkansas, and that was my second full marathon and I finished in like four and a half hours, 4.45. Yeah. So still not great, um, but Is I was getting not? better, right? And then um, this la this past February or March, I did uh, the Cowtown full marathon and did that in just over four hours. So my yeah. next goal is a sub four hour marathon. Yeah. And then eventually down to the threes. And so it's a journey, man. It's fun. Yeah, dude. That's wild. Uh, what is your diet like? Is it something that you're like? Shout out to my wife because she throws down in the kitchen. So oh. it's really just like whatever she feels like cooking. I try and tell her. I'm like, I just want something high in protein. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, if I could pick my perfect diet, it would just be high protein and a uh, bunch of fruit love fruit yeah fruit and protein and then filling in some carbs where you need it avocados salmon some healthy fat stuff like that yeah that right there avocado salmon some rice that's a perfect meal for me high fat yeah. high protein good carbs yeah some fruit blueberries brain berries they call them brain berries because they're good for your head really yeah blueberries kiwi strawberry that's it. Simple. Whole Dang. foods, real food. I try not to eat as like bagged stuff, processed stuff. Yeah. I still do. I'll eat an Oreo. I'll have some Oreos. I'll kill a whole sleeve of Oreos. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll yeah. kill it. Right, I'll right. kill it if I have to. Yeah. You know, like, I'll do it. But um, I'm very aware of how food affects me. I know what makes me feel good. I know what makes me feel more energetic, what makes me feel sluggish. And, mm -hmm. um, just trial and error. So for someone that's been interested in getting into the running community what's what's step one what's uh i mean go run obviously step right? one is but just get outside just go outside you don't have to run the whole time go for a walk go for a walk 
go for a walk and then be like, all right, I'm going to run from this mailbox to that mailbox. Just do that. Just do that. And I promise you, if you do that consistently, something will switch inside you and you're going to be like, all right, I can make it one more mailbox. I can make it one more mailbox. And eventually you're going to, you're going to be a runner. You think they should start first thing or do you think they should start after? I think you should early? start like first thing in the morning or after like, or does none of that stuff matters? I think you should start. I think you just got to make a decision. Best times now. Second best time is tomorrow morning. After that, you missed your shot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Best times now. Next best times tomorrow morning. After that, you're going to be sitting up at night thinking about it all over again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but just get outside, man. Get outside and have some alone time and listen to music or listen to a podcast. Or That's why I like recording myself, too, because it forces me to talk. Yeah. I'm not going to waste memory of me just staring at the camera. Right. Yeah. It forces me to talk about things that are actually on my mind. Yeah. On the, on the topic of a spiritual journey, someone who's kind of, you know, watching right now and they're like all right i'm trying to increase my awareness in that too what's the first step in that sitting quietly with yourself i would say meditation is yeah yeah, i just you have to eliminate all of the distractions and actually hear what's going on in your head yeah that's the first time and give it time give it time too you have to be able to without any distractions around right you're not taking in any more information yeah you just have to kind of analyze everything that's in your head. And let it, like, let it pass. Like, let the thought kind of just, like, work its way in and out. Let Honestly. it work its way in and out. Um, this is one practice I do on my runs. If I have something, like, I'm real anxious about or something uh, that's just kind of, like, weighing on me, I'll, I'll give it five breaths. And this is kind of how I do it, and it works. I haven't been doing this maybe for just, like, the last couple months. Um, but like, I'm super anxious about something. I'm like, all right. And then feel it though. Like I breathe in and I feel that emotion as much as I can. And then breathe it out, get rid of it. Cycle it through five times. Yeah. Okay. This is real. This is a real thing I'm worried about. Let me really in and out five times, get rid of it. Okay, detach myself from it. All right. Yeah. I'm not ignoring it. I'm very aware that it's here. Okay. But let me go ahead and let it run its course, put it to the side, I'll work on it. But I'm not going to let it take over my life. Right. And I, that's kind of like w- what awareness needs to be. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I have one more question and then we'll yeah. close out. Let's do it. And then let's go film some, some running shots. For man. sure, man. For sure. Um, what is your approach going into fatherhood? Um, are my, you. Uh, damn. That's the question, right? Um, my approach. Uh, and how are, how are you feeling? What's going through your head? And yeah, Right now, approach? I'm like, we're like a week away and I am just ready for this baby to be here. I've already gone through like, like now I feel like I'm just going up the roller coaster. And we're almost at the top. Yeah. Naturally, I'm anxious, you know, naturally, I'm, you know, we're both scared. Sur- uh, giving birth is a big thing you know complications mm-hmm. happen mm-hmm. and so it's like just giving it all to the universe everything's going to happen how it's supposed to happen everyone's going to be healthy and safe and so but that aside um once the baby's here man i'm just i want to be able to just radiate as much like love and positive energy from my body to that child and my family is possible. That's it. Yeah. I want to just, I just want to give and have a flow of energy through my family at all times. And I want to take responsibility for that. And I want to be the one, I don't want to be the one that doesn't necessarily, but I do, I, I want to make myself take responsibility to be that energy for my family, for other people. Um, and I'm excited again, going back to just how I've always just had to experience things myself. 
this is one of those things that I'm finally going to get to experience, and I know I'm going to learn so much from it. I, yeah, I don't know what it is yet. I know there's just so many unknown battles I'm going to fight and worries and, you know, fears I'm going to have to conquer and beautiful moments too, you know? Like, I just, I'm just so excited for everything. Yeah, dude, it sounds like you have the right mindset. You're, embr- you're yeah. embracing it. I mean, you're living it, man, you know? Yeah, it's the it's toughest thing in the world. The toughest thing in the world. Yeah. Like you said, you're learning a lot, and uh, you, you get tested uh, not just with the kid, but with your, your wife, too. Yeah. So just, but, dude, I am not worried about you at all. Like, you, I've learned so much from you today that, I feel like I should have came to you for advice back then, man. Like, Dude, okay. I'm, but I'm I'm curious to see. It. I'm you know I'm I'm gonna be hitting you up and kind of seeing how you're dealing with things, man. And yeah. just so I can, bro. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. We'll stay in touch and we'll yeah. we'll do this again. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna leave the floor. Uh, the outro music's gonna play. So uh, the platform is yours. Um, I usually just say whatever you you know you want to say to whoever is out there that's listening yeah. that might need to hear it yeah um um i mean whoever's out there listening to this just know that the dark days will come and go the light and the love will come and go um but there's beauty in all of it there's beauty in absolutely everything this life has to offer to you Valley, right? and that's it man. let's go man. thank you man thank you uh, that's been episode 19, guys. Um, thanks. I don't Sponsored know. by C4. Yeah. <laughs> and the seven, uh, seven steps to success. Seven steps to spiritual success. Spiritual success. With, but who's the author? Deepak Chopra. Check it Don't out. It. I'm, It'll change I'll let you all know next week on the next episode that's how that book is. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man. I'll, I'll take good care of it. I'll always do it. Cool. Dope. We're good. That was a lot. Yeah, bro, we got more to talk about.